How you guys doing? Welcome back to today's lesson 47, the relationship between you and a stock. I want to just talk about five quick things you can do to better associate and better get connected with a stock in particular. I, the reason I want to talk about this is that a lot of folks love to trade the same 5, 10, 15, 20 stocks, and that's totally fine. It's very viable. It's a very viable strategy. But also if you swing trade and day trade multiple stocks like I do, we like to have a lot of different ones. There is going to be some that are your bread and butter, butter for a long period of time. Now these always change, right? For me in 2021, it was CAT, it was PSNL, it was SURF, AB. I mean, I knew these stocks at the back of my hand. I could make 30, 40% in one swing really easily, risking almost nothing in the meantime. So what's important to talk about is five ways you can get better with stocks and five ways you can kind of build up some different types of techniques to better connect with the stocks that you really enjoy and to kind of have better outcomes. So that being said, a quicker lesson the next four of these things as it's just wrap up stuff. But lesson 47, the relationship between you and your favorite stocks. Let's get into it. So the first thing you can do to get better with your stock relationships and building up a bond with these relationships, these companies is journaling. The reason I find this great is one, even in the education system, which I'm much well, much more connected with than the average person is reflections never really talked about. Even on job site, reflections never talked about. And I think it's really critical to have a bunch of journaling done, reflection done, watching all the stocks. You can go back and see which ones you traded the most, which ones you called the most, which ones you played the most. It's all good stuff. We've discussed journaling at a long, long stance here as a great thing to do. I can show my journal again. It's nothing too crazy, but you have to start journaling if you want to be successful. With that being said, let's check out mine real quick. So this is mine. I just keep track of all my calls. So of course, yours is going to look different because when I do mine, I'm focusing on all the stocks that I call for my business and for my channel. Of course, I monitor red days. I have red days and red weeks as well as we can see. But across the board, I keep track of all the stocks that I play, stocks that I call, and then I can go back responsibly and talk about which ones I like the most, which ones I like the least. I have a good almost year's worth of data here, if not more, and I'm gonna keep growing it right here. Uh, keep it going. But that's what I like to do is to track these stocks, talk about them, see where they're going, how they're doing, and then go back and check them consistently. If you have a personal journal, even better. I myself, I'll put them on my Snapchat, so like I'll take them and I'll write on the actual screen of the TOS what I like about it, and then I can just screenshot that for later. There's a whole bunch of different things you can do, but if you're not journaling, you're not gonna be able to be, able to be successful in the idea of reflection and building a relationship with your stocks and what trends like the most. So of course, if you're not journaling yet, use my template, you kind of have to. That's the first main thing. The really cool thing about technical analysis, which this is in their cycle one, is the TA is forever changing and it's left on there. What's so cool about many of my charts I've called three, four, five times is I actually have the charting left on it. I can see an old wedge I was playing broke up or down and now it's a horizontal channel play. I can go up the old TA of supports and go with that. You even have something like volume profile, which you can actually have on the screen drawn, they come back six months later and the POC has gone up or down showing strength, it's consolidated, contracted, expanded, all these kinds of great things. And so technical analysis is great because you can have your supports, resistances, trend lines, mainly your patterns on these charts and as time goes on, as they shift and as they change, you can then use your current TA and adjust it accordingly. This also goes for indicators very, very well. If you're used to seeing bullish and bearish momentum from the vortex, the stochastic, Maybe the RSI getting low. You can set an RSI under 30 alert and it hits that. You can go right back into it. If the stock is consistently overbought and oversold, use that. It's a really good thing to do. So even if you do enjoy charting or don't like charting, whatever it is, I'm sure if you sat through 47 lessons, you kind of enjoy some charting. Make sure as you kind of work with these stocks, you keep the charting on. You are adapt adapting it. Maybe use different colors for different time frames, whatever it may be. But if you're not keeping the TA on your chart and actually watching it consistently and changing it as time goes on, you're missing a huge part of what you can have. So again, the second thing you should be looking for with your stock relationships is good quality technical analysis, volume profile, and indicators changing over time where you can monitor them and find new patterns and setups. It's pretty fantastic. The third thing is consistent alerts. We just talked about that briefly, but find out if you enjoy a stock a lot, what makes it tick technically, fundamentally, mentally, but in this particular case for technical analysis, is there a RSI oversold? Is it a stochastic under 40? Is it a vortex cross over under? Is it possibly a trend line, a support, whatever it is. If it's super consistent, 
Is there a way that you can just set an alert, leave it, and come back later? If that's the case, this is a massive, massive thing that you can do. I have hundreds of stocks I have alerts set up for that I've had going for weeks, if not months, if not years, that whenever it hits, it alerts me that single day. I go back and check. It's my captain who eats some food, I guess. It hits, it you know makes an alert for me. I can go check it and be like, oh yeah, it actually is an R Center 30 stock, Center 30 is a technically strong and get a really easy free play. So having alerts set up and probably utilizing them is a great thing that a beginner, especially veteran can do to be more consistent and build their relationship with their stocks. Fourth, in a certain types of market conditions, this means more than others, but in like a bear market, it does definitely stand out. Um, is focusing industries, indexes, and of course sectors. I wanna focus on industry though. As we looked at in lessons 11 through 15, it's critical to understand that some stocks, some industries, some sectors, all work better and move together than others. I like to use solar and uh, uranium at the moment for my examples because solar almost all moves in sync. Same with uranium. If one of them sticking out is extra bullish or bearish, that may mean something to check out. If they're all going up and the trends are all up, it may be a sector to focus or industry to focus compared to other ones. So the XLF is falling off a cliff, but XLE is running, maybe one day trade look at xle stocks over xlf stocks and you can start to build that relationship with certain types of industries it's like me with solar uranium energy vehicles all these kinds of great things so make sure as you kind of do your journaling then you reflect you're constantly thinking about hey i kind of need to make sure i'm right now what industry it's in because you see a consistent play here like if you play solar and then jks and then ab and all these kinds of like same stocks in the same kind of sector and same kind of industry maybe that's part of your edge you never even realized it. You would never notice that if you didn't think about it. So make sure if you are playing the same type of stocks, you write that down because it could be part of your edge and it gives you four or 5% more winning margin. That's huge. And the last thing you can do to really monitor the relationship between you and your stocks is the fundamental earnings reports and as these statements come out. The reason I mentioned this is that if you watch a stock like Tesla from like 2010 to 20, you can really, really get a better idea of how it's doing fundamentally, financially, all these kinds of great things I'm reading the earnings reports. I know a lot of folks like AMC and GME and these meme stocks are really into reading these reports and building that relationship. I just use Finviz and I do go back in history and look at like, hey, the EPS was at 10, now it's eight, then six and four, getting a better value. Is that a good thing compared to the debt ratio? Is the EPS good? All these kinds of great things. You'll never have that if you don't track that as well. Now again, Finviz is great because it actually, if you pay for the leap, it gives you like five, six years of those statements and you can just do it quickly, which I like to do. I'm a technical trader, so fundamentals do matter, but not to like that degree. But to actually go through and track these things, like read the reports and what they're doing, how they're innovating, like Apple does a great job with that. It can really help you build that relationship with a stock. That's it. I just wanted to mention that quickly probably our quickest lesson for sure. I just wanted to bring it up. There's not much more to it besides me just highlighting in our last few moments together. You have to make sure you really pressure yourself to reflect, to journal, and to see where your edge is. As we kind of finish up this class and discuss in our next few lessons, our edge, just to refine that really quickly. It's important to note that there are some things you can do to make your edge better and to really focus your edge. And one of the big things is reflecting, journaling, having the old technical analysis with the volume profile, alerting, and having the same exact alert set up finding all uh, industries, sectors, and indexes you focus on, and then of course, reading the fundamental reports as time goes on. If you do those five things, it's gonna help you with your consistency, which is the whole point of these last few lessons, and help you get much, much better at trading. With that being said, very quick lesson, I like that a lot, is 48, another quick lesson on how you can finalize your rules. We'll just discuss again, run through what these things mean, and then jump into our final words and end this class. With that being said, lesson 48, I'm wearing the same thing, I'm recording all these in one day, sue me. Lesson four, lesson 48, finalizing your rules. Let's get into it. Oh, courage, go boy.